chicken and shrimp. You know, I heard a lot about Bill Bradley and his success as a student, as an athlete, and then this thing that he won called the Rose Scholarship. So I went into college thinking that, you know, possibly I could uh, win the same type thing. Tremendous, tremendous experience. I'm, uh, I'm only breathless right now. I can't even talk, but uh, I'm just so excited. Well, they need you out there, so you better get all right, all right. You know, it's, it's just been a, a wonderful experience, of course, being a wonderful experience that I had gone through the Rose Scholarship process. story just makes me smile. Yeah, man. Always yeah. has. Uh, let's welcome in Myron Roll, former Florida State and NFL safety, now a neurosurgeon. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. Doing <You're> very well. <laughs> hey, uh, we just showed you when you won the Rhodes Scholarship and then arrived in the field the second quarter against Maryland back in 08. What was that whole day like? Oh, uh, the day was amazing. Uh, you know, I applied for the Rhodes Scholarship because I thought it'd be a way that I could uh, advance my career, uh, learn medical anthropology, study among some of the great uh, thinkers of our generation. But the day I had an interview in Birmingham, Alabama, my team was in College Park, Maryland, getting ready to play at University of Maryland. So I interviewed, uh, about a 20 minute interview, won the scholarship that day, got a police escort to the airport in Birmingham, flew to College Park, got to the stadium, arrived there, my parents were there, gave me a, a big hug and a kiss and told me, now get ready to go play this game. My teammates were there, celebrated with me, we won the game. It was a truly exciting and remarkable day. Myron, uh, individually, we're not smart enough to interview you, but they combined our IQs, so we qualified. We're still not smart enough. Exactly. <laughs> uh, after winning the Rhodes Scholar, you had a, a decision to make, to go to Ox Oxford or study potentially or, or go pro? What, what was the difference in your decision here? Uh, it was a very tough decision. You know, I chose Florida State University based on the fact that I wanted to go to the NFL. Uh, Bobby Bowden, Mickey Andrews, they had a pedigree and an acumen for sending players to the league. My cousin Samari Roll, Antrell, all played in the NFL, so I think it was a part of my DNA to want to get to that, that level. Uh, but the Rhodes Scholarship and that Oxford opportunity was just too great to pass up. And I figured that, you know, if I went, I could increase my intellectual capital, meet some incredible people, travel, and really just behoove my future interest of being a, a citizen of the world. So I made the decision to go, try to stay in shape as best I could, ate some fish and chips and bad food over there, but <laughs> try to stay in shape and came back to the Combine Senior Bowl and entered the NFL a year later. And uh, I think it was a good decision. I really do. Uh, drafted in 2010 by the Tennessee Titans, signed a four-year deal. When did you start thinking about changing careers? So I always thought about neurosurgery. Uh, my brother Marchant gave me the book Gifted Hands by Ben Carson when I was very young. So Ben Carson planted the seed of neurosurgery in my mind. Uh, he's a guy who looked like me, he came from a similar background as me, he had parents who focused on education like mine did. Uh, so I knew once I exhausted all of my athletic ability out of my body that neurosurgery would be the next move where I could have a uh, valuable impact, make an indelible footprint and really just um, save lives and help people and uh, have a broader reach than making tackles or interceptions on the football field. So once I finished playing, I just had to pray about it, talk to my parents, and really uh, think about how neurosurgery, that move into neurosurgery, could, uh, could really uh, make the, the next chapter of my life worth the living. It's an interesting situation for you, especially when we bring up CTE and head trauma and what you do for a living and what you did in the past for a living. Uh, has that affected you uh, in the process, being a neurosurgeon and CTE and head trauma and, and what you did in the past playing football? So when I played football, I didn't really think about concussions and traumatic brain injury as much. But now I'm glad that there's more awareness behind it and more student athletes and professional athletes and even high school and Pop Warner kids are thinking about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of research going on right now where neurosurgeons are looking at subtyping concussions based on the predominant symptom. Is it balance? Is it uh, ocular motor problems? Is it anxiety or depression? Then there's uh, physicists who are looking at different aspects of concussion. Psychiatrists looking at depression and social psychologists looking at the failure to report by some of these athletes who have these subacute symptoms and don't want to take themselves out of the game because they don't want to break the culture of being macho or being tough. So I I'm hoping that during my residency in neurosurgery, I'm able to uh, study this and add a very credible and valuable voice to this very, very uh, concerning and serious topic. Yeah, all right. Have you figured out where you're doing your residency? I have not. Today is actually the last day where we can put our rank order list in. I have a few good programs that I'm looking at. 
Um, you know, I, I definitely want a place where the chairman is, is positive, uh, where I get along with the residents geographically, where I like to be there. I want to do pediatric neurosurgery based on you know my time with Ben Carson, but then also with a guy named Jay Storm from CHOP in Philadelphia, who I've had a chance to work with. So I'm looking for a very well-rounded program, and hopefully on March 17th, that's when the match day is for medical students. That's when I find out. Hopefully, uh, you know, I get the place where I want to go. Byron, I can't get over the pressure. Like, there's so much pressure in a situation like that when you're doing the surgery. Can you relate anything from, from your experience in football and handling pressure to what you're doing in the operating room? Oh, that's a great question. So, you know, people ask me a lot of times, how does football influence you now? Well, football has been a part of my, my upbringing for a long time. My daddy started the Caribbean American Football League back home in the Bahamas, where we're from. And so, you know, I, I think I've been trained and built to have good discipline, uh, mitigate pressure, to communicate, to overcome adversity, to strategize and prepare. And a lot of those same lessons that I learned through practice and playing my sport, I'm using now in the operating room. When there's a pressure situation, when we get into an artery that we're not supposed to get into, and there's a bleed and we need to control it, you know, can I go back to my fundamentals, take a breath and try to figure this out, communicate with everybody and do the best I possibly can for the patient that's on the table. You know, there are times when you play football where you're backed up, fourth down, you know, you gotta make a stop uh, and you have to kind of go back to your fundamentals and do the best you can for your team. Uh, so I'm, I'm using the same traits that I developed during my football career in the operating room, and it's made the transition quite seamless. Impressive. Oh, no doubt. Yes, I feel a little bit smarter. <laughs> I feel a whole lot dumber, actually. <laughs> All right, Byron, thank you so much, and good luck to you in, in the next uh, venture. Thank let, you. So let much. us know what you choose, all right? Okay, I will. Thank you, guys. All right, Byron Roll here on Sports Center. As we continue this Wednesday morning.